Hi everybody! In this tutorial we will learn how to make basic registration and login screen in Android. For its implementation we will use MySQL server to store user's email and password. To connect to MySQL server and create a new user we will use PHP scripts. The response from the server will be in JSON format. Here in this image I drew elements that are needed. So we have two input fields and a button. If the user is a new user then when he or she clicks on that button registration will take place. On the other hand if the user is already registered then he will receive a message saying the login is successful or login failed because the password was wrong. Ok, let's go. MySQL server is running on XAMPP local server, so let's go to localhost slash php myadmin page. In order to create a database we will just use this MySQL console and type our code there. It's faster than clicking and choosing from all drop-down menus and so on. So first we need the new database. So type create database and I will name it tutorial number 2 then keyword use followed by our database name meaning that hey select this database I want to do something with it ok now create a new table create table users in the table we need the following ID of the user that will be our primary key so make it not null and auto increment then an email email is a string so type var char not null password also a string for its length type 32 reason for that is because we will use md5 hash encryption to store our password. MD5 hash is 32 characters long so that's why we need 32 characters. If you go lower than that nothing will work then. Ok, now let's just set the primary key and also a unique key. Email is unique because we don't want to have two same emails stored in the database. When you are finished, press Ctrl plus Enter to execute the query. As you see, the database has been created as well as the table. Now we need to write some PHP scripts. I'm using an Eclipse IDE. So first create a new project. I named it Tutorial2. Create a new PHP file named config.php. This is a basic file with our database information. Here we will just define this basic information. So hostname is our local host because I'm running XAMPP on the local computer. Uh, then username is the name of the PHP my admin user. For me it's a default one named the root. Its password is not set by default so no password then db name representing the name of the database in this case it is tutorial2 ok uh, let's create a new script called connection.php first we include our config script now we have a task to establish a connection to the database and make a reference to the connection so that we can execute queries nice way to do this is to create a new class that has a private variable. So let's create a class named db connection. Then declare the variable named connect that represents our connection. When we make a reference to this class, the constructor of the class will be executed first. So in this constructor, let's initialize the connection type in dollar sign this 
when we say keyword this we are referring to the class itself okay so then object operator or simply arrow then connect on this way we can access private variable connect through the constructor okay so it equals mysql connect with our hostname username password and db name we can also add or die function saying there is a connection error all right connection is established now we need to access it from the other class easiest way is to simply implement a getter function so like this and now simply return the connect variable by typing return this arrow connect that's it for this script one more script and that's all let's name new script user control.php first implement our previous script next create a new class I named it user declare two private variables db and connection db will be used to call a db connection class to establish a connection to the database our second variable named connection will simply call a getter function from the db connection class and retrieve the current connection these two steps will be executed in the constructor so type in this arrow db equals new db connection okay connection is now made then this connection equals this arrow db arrow get connection now in our connection variable there is a reference to the active connection and with it we can make queries and that's exactly what we need so let's first take care of our post parameters and then we will finish up the class so first in order to get everything started let's make a reference to the user class afterwards we ask if our post array contains key named email and key named password then store their values into these two variables next we check if both email and password are not empty then we can log in or register the user remember that we are working with the basic md5 hash passwords so first thing is to encrypt the password to do that let's create a variable encrypted password and call this function md5 and pass it the current password it will take uh, this string and convert it into a 32 character string okay so if the email and the password are not empty then let's call a new function named does user exist and pass it the email and the encrypted password else if not so this is the case if user doesn't fill any of fields or fill one field but not the other then we will print out the message in JSON format saying you must fill both fields okay uh, so we sorted that out now let's create this does user exist function in the user class its parameters are email and password remember the password is the encrypted password so first we check if the user with this login information already exists in the database so let's type a new query select all from users where email equals to our parametered email and password equals to our parametered password then execute this query and store its result into this variable named result then we check if number of rows from our result is greater than zero that means the user with these parameters has been found in that case we create an array named json 
and inside of it we will put an indicator or to be more precise an object named success that has a value of greeting message and simply we will print this JSON array using the JSON encode function then just close the running connection this was in case the email and password are found for the user in database but what if the user is not found that means that we have two cases first case is create a new user and the second one if the user can't be created that means there is already a user with this email but the password is wrong okay so first let's try to register the user new query insert into users email password values parametered email and parametered password then again we execute this query and store the result into this variable named is inserted so if the user is created the mysql query function will return 1 and 0 if not so by following that if is inserted equals 1 that means a new user has been created and let's just put the message of successful registration in our JSON array if not if the user couldn't be created that means there is already a user with the selected email and the password for that account is incorrect so in our JSON array let's create new object called error with the message wrong password okay after the if else condition is executed simply print out the JSON array using the JSON encode function and as always close the connection also don't forget to add a header that indicates that the response will be in JSON format and that's pretty much it now to test all this I'm using a application called postman to send a post request and get a response from the server first we type a link to our user control PHP script then in its body we must pass the email and the password well, let's type something like test ok click send and voila success in JSON format let's check the database you can see the user has been created and the password is stored in MD5 format if we click on send again then we will simply log in let's try it as you see and now let's try to input the wrong password and now we get an error saying the wrong password okay so thanks for watching see you in the part 2 of the video in which we will build android application see you